Okay, so ladies, I like to bring you a gift regularly. I gave you Evan Anton, didn't I? Did I disappoint? No. Well, now you're going to have Logan Ryan. And also, I love this man because he is all about our four-legged furry friends. And he's super cute and he's hot and he's an NFL player. So stay with me. Okay, Schnook, come up here. Okay, this is... Wonderful. Let me see. Okay, Schnook, come up here. Okay. Oh. always likes to do a shag before we start. I see. It. Get it out. It's like a domination thing, but he just has to shag. Let him get it over and done with, and then we can all get on with life. Okay, Schnook, are you finished? Say hello to Logan. Hello. Got it in. Well, welcome. How are we doing? Yeah, good. Welcome to All Things Vanderpump. So great. I'm excited. You. Yeah. I, I feel know. like our worlds are are joining the sports world and in your world, I feel like they're joining. Yeah. For the love of animals. Well, you know what? I know absolutely diddly squat about football. I mean, also being English. So I am useless when it comes to talk about football, but I'm super interested in that. But what I love is the fact that you use your platform for the greater good. And being such a dog lover, um, I've seen you've done so much and achieved so much. So I'd like to talk to you about a multitude of things, but obviously that's the one that's closest to my heart. And I no see doubt. that you've um, raised over $250,000 for animal charities. So thank you for that, because it's extraordinarily difficult, especially in these times as well, since COVID, to keep everything going, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know that we actually have the Vanderpump Dog Foundation, but it's also a rescue that we have in Los Angeles where we have all the rescues um, and we kind of reinvented the wheel when it comes to rescue. It's like a boutique shop. I've it, seen it. Have you it's seen pink. it? Have you been, it's have pink. Have you been or you've seen it online? I so, you know, I did my research on you. So oh, I've, okay, I've watched, you. I watched zero reality TV. Oh, so good. We I have, feel so bad about we have the that, then. <laughs> we have that in common that we know nothing about each other other than our work with animals. And I did some snooping and saw what you did with your rescue in the, in the brick and mortar shop. And yes. my wife and I, who run our rescue, the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation, we had that idea um, years ago, similar to yours. We weren't, we weren't able to pull it off at that time, but you do a great job with a for-profit yeah. Uh, for the nonprofit, 100% for yeah. charity yeah. and a place where people can go feel safe and comfortable. And uh, a rescue dog, the best breed of dog, I believe, is a rescue dog. Um, and they're oh, as glamorous as, as some of these other dogs are. So I think what you're doing is great. And I have a lot of respect for what you're doing. And, well, it, and the pink. It's uh, yeah, the pink and the blue. It's um, it's been very successful. We've already kind of rescued out seventeen hundred dogs domestically since wow. we've um, been open, and yeah, everything we sell in that shop basically supports the rescue. So it's been really kind of a bit of a struggle through COVID, but we've managed to keep open. Um, and we do lots of other things as well. We've got a rescue in China. Um, wow. which has been a little bit difficult through the times because we've had to move our rescue operation because they want them, the dogs, away from the cities. Um, but we've got 500 dogs there as well that have been pulled from the meat trade. So that's been, you know, a horrific alternative. So we've been trying to keep that going. And then we also do a lot of work with the homeless, you know, trying to kind of help them with their dogs because there's something like, I think, 60,000 people at any one night in Los Angeles County that are homeless and like 20% of them have dogs, which is so incredible for them yeah. because, you know, they are man's best friend and they really sometimes are the only, you know, kind of, it's the only interaction they have with their animals. So we try and help with the spay and neutering and worming and all that kind of things. So we try to do at least 50 a month. So the Vanderpump Dog Foundation has a huge reach, but it's with people like you that support, you know, foundations and things. It's it's really a great honor for me to kind of talk to you to see that you've done so much when so many other people do so little, you know, and I... And yeah, I really with their, it, yeah, with yeah. their platform. And yeah, to speak a little bit about, you know, what I do, the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation, uh, RARF for short. I mean, you don't see a lot of people in Animal Rescue that look like me. I'm 29, I'm an athlete, I'm young, I'm cool. And we're trying to make rescuing hip. We're trying to make it the cool thing to do. We're trying to make it the culture. And um, in our short time of, of three years of my, me and my wife running the 501c3 nonprofit that we do 
Like you said, we raised over two hundred fifty thousand dollars to get a five hundred one c three to get the whole thing in, you know, instated yeah. with the government. It's a lot of work. A lot of people don't realize. Well, that. can I, I tell you the story? Tried. How we can I tell you the story? You how we started it? Do we right have time? Now. I don't mean to flirt with you, but you are super handsome as well. <laughs> Thank you. I'll make sure my <laughs> wife knows that. So <laughs> I still got sure it a little bit. You know, come. I got I got two young kids, and I'm I'm working home and animals. Uh, two dogs, two kids. Uh, young dad, and I'm I'm feeling old and washed up sometimes. So it's good to get those compliments, you know, to make sure oh, I still got it a still little bit. Got it for God's sake! Yeah. I don't think you ever lost it. Anyway, at 29, if you don't still have it, what's the hope for the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, football years—they're trying to call me old pretty soon. Don't tell them that they're trying to—they're trying to call me old in my in my career, but. Right. I'm still doing it at a, at a high level, so well, it's cool. I would love to talk to you a little bit about the football as well because I know nothing about it. I saw that oh. you can do something like a a 40-yard dash in four and a half seconds, but I really <laughs> do want to say that I can do that around Nemo Marcus in less than four and a half seconds. In yeah, in heels, in <laughs> heels too, I'm sure you yeah, can. exactly. Okay, ladies, I think we deserve better than having to choose between either cheap disposable razors or overpriced brands and thankfully i found the athena club razor so now in covid even though i didn't want to shave my legs i'm going to how about that ladies so the athena club razor is expertly designed with the sharpest patented blades on the market these one-of-a-kind blades are enhanced with a revolutionary water-activated serum that has shea butter and hyaluronic acid for a skin-soothing shave with maximum hydration. I have to say, actually, it was really smooth and no nicks and cuts, so thank you for that. And the best part of this is, is their razor kit's only $9. It's actually like this beautiful pale pink with this rose gold, and it's got this magnetic thing you put in the shower, so thank you for sending it to me. I love it. It includes two five-blade razor heads, your choice for razor handle color and magnetic holder for easy storage you can get new blades shipped regularly so you never run out but it's super cute it's got like this kind of cushiony feel it's gorgeous it's not like one of those kind of cheap plastic things it looks great and it doesn't stop at incredible razors with athena club they carry all the self-care essentials you need from period care body care you know pri probiotic stuff multivitamins and every product is vegan and cruelty free i mean they have everything that you need. Okay, so stop using razors that undeliver and switch to Athena Club. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code LISA. That's A T H E N A C L U B dot com with promo code LISA for 20% off and have fur free legs. These days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping that we can do, unfortunately. But there's a good thing. That's where Honey comes in. It's a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically applies the best one available at checkout. It's amazing. Honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands to even food delivery. They like find the best deal and you use the Honey thing even when I bought the strawberry dress. I got a discount. So what's the downside? There isn't one. Honey is basically your online shopping best friend. Even when I bought the strawberry dress, I put in the promo code, the thing with honey, and you get a discount. What's not to love? Here's how it works. You get honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks by going to joinhoney.com slash Lisa. Okay, so go to joinhoney.com slash Lisa. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 plus supported sites, honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons then you wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons for that site if honey finds working codes it applies the best one to your cart so instead of all those old coupon clipping stuff they used to have to do uh, 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 not anymore if it's simple if you have a computer honey should be on it because it's free and it works with whatever browser you use so you can get honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash lisa so joinhoney.com slash lisa and that's joinhoney.com slash lisa right and then when you're shopping you just kind of plug it in and then up comes your discount what's not to love Woohoo! more shopping easy day but i know you've um you started off in um you're born in new jersey or you were raised in new jersey is that right yeah born and raised in new jersey yeah. went to college in new jersey and then um, you went to your first team was in boston was it the new england patriots yeah With won Tom two Brady. super bowls there 
with Tom Brady. Wow. Yep. He is something else. So, How do you feel about great. him kind of defecting? Or what do people think about that? Um, I love it because you know what? He has the power to do so. Um, he's a great player. He did a lot for that team. Um, he brought them what five championships, I believe. So, um, he's done everything in his power that he could. And he had the opportunity, um, and he asked for money from them. They didn't give him what he asked for. And he went somewhere else and got it. And he's bringing his talents elsewhere. And, and, you know, it went for me, I was 21 years old when I left Rutgers university, I left college to go be a pro player. And I got drafted by a team and I went to that team for four years. And my girlfriend at the time, now wife, uh, we went up to New England where we were drafted. And this is kind of how I got into the animal, animal world a little bit. And I was playing with Tom Brady and I won two Super Bowls there in my first four years. So that was pretty cool to do. And uh, my wife, who was a college softball player, her name's Ashley. I'll be speaking about her a lot because she really is the the key force behind what we do. I've seen pictures of your wedding that are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. In St. Lucia, right? And she's in, in Lucia. her wedding dress and she's in a street with a dog. And I also yeah. heard that you donated, you asked people to donate to the animal charity um, instead of presents. So I love that. And and I, you know, I really want to send her my well wishes because yeah. I, I guess it's just a collaborative effort between the two of you. You both are kind of passionate about dogs. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. When I went up there to, to, you know, play football in Boston, she moved in with me and we were dating at the time and she kind of didn't know what she wanted to do. She was an athlete in college. She was kind of like most students kind of going to the real world, transitioning from being a coach to being a personal trainer. She's very fit. And, uh, she just asked me one day, she, she told me, she was like, you know what? Um, I trust that you're going to handle what you got to do in, in, in your career and financially. And I'm going to go work at an animal shelter. Oh, and my wife took a job. Worked at an animal shelter. She took a job working at the animal shelter. Oh, right. So in Providence. You, you loved dogs before this and it was just something that you also bonded over. So if you've met a woman that didn't like dogs, would that be like a, that just wouldn't work for you at all? Yeah, at this point, no, it wouldn't work at all. Um, yeah, me and Ashley, we got a dog together. We got our first dog, Nala, together in college, a puggle, a pug beagle mix. Yeah. And uh, we named her Nala because she looked like a little lion cub from Lion King. So oh, we, right. we named her Nala, Simba and Nala. So we named her Nala. And uh, we had a dog. So we moved up together and Ashley's working at the animal shelter now. And she's coming home sad. I mean, it's, it's sad working there day to day, seeing the struggles that they deal with. Um, See, we get a seeing- lot of our dogs from the kill shelters. That's where a lot, of, I mean, they come from hoarders, yeah. they come from on the side of the road, but right. hit by cars or God knows what, you know, just left on the side of the road. Yeah. But a lot of us come from the kill shelter and we're one of the only and, rescues in um, California that actually, you know, take pregnant mothers and birth them. So, so we have wow. lots of puppies as well, rather than them being euthanized. Yeah. And Ashley, she worked at a no kill shelter. So they had a very li- low, uh, youth, youth, uh, youth, Asia rate, youth, yeah, Ooh, butchering that one on your podcast, That's okay. but they had a very, very low with that. So that, that wasn't the issue. They, the issue was the dogs kind of losing their abilities in behind cages all day. You know, yeah. they're sitting there for years, not getting adopted for months, years. So I came in and I would stop by on my off days and NFL or off days Tuesday, which is today. And I would, I would, uh, stop by and bring her lunch. And I started to play with the dog and get to know a couple of them. Mr. Bingley, I remember he was deaf in both ears. He would face the wrong direction when you walk up to his cage. He would be looking the wrong way. Couldn't even hear you. He was recently oh. deaf. And uh, Did he get adopted? So he did. So this is, how, this is how it happened. So I said I had to do something. So I started taking pictures with the dogs and throwing on my Instagram. And I, wear, I wore jersey number 26 for years. So the 26th of every month, I would put a dog up. Uh, put them on my page and say, Hey fans, look at this dog. He's available at the Providence animal shelter or wherever I'm at. And, um, we took all dogs for one year. We did an experiment and we took all dogs that were in the shelter for at least a year and were tough cases, Mr. Bingley right. blinded or mm-hmm. deaf in both ears, obviously a puppy or some dog is going to yeah. go get adopted in two days. Sure. We, we took the ones that were kind of the, That's the, the shelter there, workers, basically. best friends. Cause yeah. they've been there for years. Yeah. And, uh, the first year doing, I think we did 11 months cause we started in whatever month and, uh, all 11 got adopted. Wow. So Thank we went from, yeah. we went from calling shelters and I went from, Hey, can I go take a picture with your dogs? Why do you, why do you want to do that? Who are you? What is this? Blah, blah, blah. To people emailing us hundreds of emails a day 
thousands a month or to, to kind of choose their dog. Hey, this dog needs to be featured. This right. dog needs to be featured. Right. So now we're like, wow, we can't, yeah, we have to can't choose. Keep up with it. Yeah. Right. We couldn't keep up with the demand. It was a great feedback. We kind of got the sports world kind of into the animal world a little bit and uh, kind of combined those fan bases or those people and found good people that wanted to make a difference. And I was showing them how and showing them where and showing them where to support. I love this. And, and you know, as I, I really do think that if you're kind of blessed with celebrity or a platform, that everybody should choose something, whatever the cause, not everybody's going to feel the same way about dogs that we do. No doubt. But you should choose something that you support. I mean, I support kind of many different things, um, but obviously this has been a real passion uh, trying to, you know, change the treatment of dogs worldwide. We've spoken at Congress and managed to pass resolutions. And as recently, you know, um, the PACT Act was a big thing for us because it basically changes when people are cruel to animals, it changes it from a misdemeanor to a felony. So all these things, having spoken at Congress about condemning the dog meat trade all over the world, have been part of our kind of Van Pump Dog Foundation's portfolio. So I really appreciate people like you that really can draw attention and shine a light. It, it really is so refreshing. But as you say yourself, you are a very unusual character to be part of the kind of dog rescue. You're so young and you're a football player, but have you had much kind of support from people around you in the football world? Have they kind of said, hey, I love what you're doing or are they not as invested in it? Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, people know me for that. People seek advice and like we're trying to push, our foundation is, is ever growing, ever changing based on what the needs are. So with COVID being such a, yeah. such a thing, obviously um, trying to help the low income areas, trying to help the areas where I grew, yeah. out, grew up at, I'm trying to give those people the resources. Of course, we do spay neuter clinics. Of course, we've done uh, vaccines, giving those out. We do that stuff in low income areas all the time. But we're trying to encourage people from all different races and skin colors and in places where you grow up to get behind animal rescue and raising money and awareness. And that kind of, to answer your question about the football world, that kind of goes to my second part of the story of me just taking pictures with dogs. That was yeah. just a hobby. That was yeah. just a big, we didn't know what we had. So then you fast forward a couple of years and what we talked about me and my wife, we get married in St. Lucia and I'm smart. We do a small little wedding. I don't have to pay for a big wedding. <laughs> she, many, she, she does a small wedding. How many people? Oh, it was, uh, it was me, my wife, her sister, my brother, our parents, maybe eight people max. Right. Destination. We went to St. Lucia and, uh, we went out there a little weekend in St. Lucia we go to, uh, we're in the town of, of Sufri, St. Lucia. And after the wedding, my wife wants to do this thing. And I'm sure you may be familiar with it called Trash the Dress Wedding Shoot. And this beautiful dress that we bought her, she wanted to jump in the ocean or jump off a waterfall or whatever she does. Right. She's wild to kind of trash the dress. So I'm like, we spent a lot of money. Why would we ever do that? But it's, it's our day, your day, whatever. You got it, boss. So we go, I love we're that, walking through. The fact that you called her boss just shortly after you just got married, right? Oh, oh yeah, wedding day. You know, you know whose day it is. I'm just there to look good for the pictures. <laughs> and yeah, that was her. That was her whole thing. She booked it. She planned it. She told me when to show up, and and a smile. So okay, that's good. what I did. Hopefully, and you um, showed up with a nice ring as well. Yeah, I did okay on the <laughs> ring. So she didn't ask me to upgrade. We did okay the first time, so we're good. <laughs> Get it right the first time. You never got to upgrade. So, um, well, that's what you think now, but I'll talk to you in the <laughs> exactly. next 20 years. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to stay charitable. Hey, you know, I, 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 I give all the money the back. I prick that he gave me when I got married. And 20 years later, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So um, we're trashing the dress. We have a beautiful small wedding on top of a mountain at Jade Mountain in St. Lucia. All our friends are kind of, we got them to kind of FaceTime and we sent the link that they can watch live well, that, that weren't invited. Really pissed off if I was sent a link. I'd be like, why didn't you, got you send a link. a ticket, huh? You got a link. Because look, not everyone could afford the flight that I'm right, paying for you right. to fly out. Why and did then, you decide on Solution? Uh, she, she want, we wanted to do destination. She wanted to do destination. We couldn't really agree on, I don't want to say we couldn't agree. It was pretty simple. She wanted to do destination somewhere beautiful. And my family's from the Caribbean. My fam family's from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Nice. So I'm familiar with the Caribbeans. And it was beautiful. It was just a beautiful place to go to. They sure. took care of us. And they allowed our daughter to go. I mean, this, this was on top of a mountain. And they don't allow had young been, kids there. Did you go check it out first? Or did you just show up? No, we just showed up. We looked wow. at it online. 
we did some, some virtual tours and we just showed up and that's what they do. They host great, um, you know, weddings and stuff like that. So we just felt it was very peaceful. It was very like us. I might play football and be very out there on the camera, but I'm very down to earth. Yeah. Uh, like my peace and quiet. I'm not flashy and fancy all the time. I'm in sweatpants a lot, you know? I mean, I, I do go to my Neiman Marcus sometime and get some designer stuff, but oh, most of the time, my personality, <laughs> our personality is very laid back. Yeah. I'm not sprinting around like you, but I'm, I'm still hustling <laughs> around this, the rack a little bit. Well, I'm waiting for it to be open, um, you know, back yeah. to normal. Um, so what happened to the dog that's in the wedding pictures? There was like this yeah. brown dog. Did, did yeah. he get adopted or was he all a All right. Sweet dog? So here's, here's where all the story is. Here's where my, my animal world took off. So we get married on, I call, I can't, maybe Saturday. That Sunday, we're walking back. We throw our dress and suit back on. We're walking to the city. And like any um, country that you, go in, that you go vacation to, as soon as you leave that resort, what do you see? Poverty. Yeah. Poverty, yeah. homelessness, yeah. Um, stray animals. Now, the, uh, the homelessness wasn't so bad, but there was a lot of stray animals. Yeah. Cats, dogs run over the streets. I'm talking to some of the, the people in the streets and they're like, yeah, that's just, those, those are street dogs. So we're walking through doing our beautiful photo shoot. And the photographer, the first thing he tells us, whatever you do, don't pet feed these dogs. because They're not going to let us work. They're going to follow us. We're gonna have a pack of dog following us and we're not gonna be able to get the, 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 the shots that you paid for. I can and imagine I said, your wife not listening to that. Right. So I said, okay. Yes, sir. Understood. Yeah. I turn around. My <laughs> wife is getting licked in the face <laughs> by, by a you. street dog. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> by a street dog. Right. By, by a dog that you've seen in the picture. Yeah. The photographer said, hold it. This is great. And just took a picture. Oh. I'm looking kind of in shock. Like, what are you doing? He just said, don't do that. She's getting licked in the face by this dog. And um, we go, we go trash the dress. We do our thing. We go back to our How beautiful. How did you trash the dress? What you jump? She jumped in a pool or something. Yeah, we jumped in this little natural waterfall thing off a rock into the water. So uh, we kind of she's standing on the waterfall. We're kissing, and then she kind of jumped in. So it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, the dress was trash for sure. Yeah, and um, we go back to our our beautiful hotel room, and we're sitting there. We both feel like something's wrong. We're like, there are a lot of animals that need some help. Maybe we can help out. Maybe we can donate. Maybe we can see what they need. So the, um, the owner of the resort of Jane mountain, his daughter runs the one and only, uh, animal foundation, animal rescue in St. Lucia. Right. So coincidentally we get her, we, we reach out to the, to how to help. They give us her contact. She runs help Paul St. Lucia. So we call them. How do we help? I'm an NFL player. I'm kind of getting away. I'm getting married. I will. I love animals. I do some of this at home. I don't have a foundation or anything at this point, but I would love to help. And they said, we need money. We just don't have the structure. We don't have anything. We need money. You know? How many and I dogs said, are okay. you talking about that, that they have to deal with? Um, the, well, they have all these street animals they're picking up. They're spaying, neutering. Spaying, neutering um, is the key. Right. It's just, it's just a whole different, it's, it's a problem in a country that's not even talked about how it's talked about here. Yeah. And they need a lot of people to fly these people back to the United States to get adopted. How do you get them adopted to the United States? Someone's got to fly out to fly them back. So we said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a donation to, um, to help Paul St. Lucia. So we're going to make a donation to them and our currency, which is going to transfer in their currency to more. Right. And, 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 and even on top of that, all those friends and family, the hundreds of people that are watching back home via Zoom, we're going to encourage them to forgo our wedding registry and to donate to help Paul St. Oh, Lucia. Nice. So all our right. friends and yeah, family yeah, donated. We donated. We've actually got somebody doing that right now that's just approached us and said, I want all our, our wedding guests to donate to the Vanderpump Dog Foundation. Yeah. Because I think, you know, as sometimes at our time in life, it, when we're not kind of in our teens, we've got everything we need. And suddenly you have a wedding, you're going to end up with a load of superfluous stuff. So I think yeah. we'll have a real feel-good factor about that. Exactly. And people said, okay, sure. So friends and family, like, who click and donate, click and donate. So it was a lot of money um, that went to them. Wow. And we flew home and we felt like we did a good thing. The day I land back in the United States, my phone rings and my emails are blowing up and things are going crazy. That picture that my wife took, the photographer the posted, 
with the yeah. brown dog. The photographer posted it and said, this couple came in, didn't tell anybody what they did for a living, didn't tell who they were, got married in secrecy, pretty much, were hiding out, honeymooning, and they decided to uh, donate X amount of money and raise all this money. And that, that photo that this, this, he kind of told the story of what we did. Yeah. We didn't tell anybody. I didn't right. tell anybody what I did. He told the story. It went viral. Huffington wow. Post, the Dodo, ESPN yeah. picked it up, all the sport outlets, all the animal outlets, all the news outlets, they went viral. So now all these people are hitting me up and saying, how do we donate to you guys? How do we help? You guys are right. awesome. You guys are authentic. Right. You guys are real. The story read that this young couple, NFL couple, goes to a different country, um, raises money. They ended up naming that dog in that picture, Logan, in my honor. Oh, and that really? money, they- Where did the yes, dog end up then? Do you know? The, I think the dogs found a happy home. Wow. The dog definitely found a happy home. Um, and all that money that we ended up raising that weekend for them, it ended up uh, funding the ability to spay and neuter all their animals, 60 or 70 dogs on the street and the cats on top of it. So we kind of temporarily fixed yeah. their, their stray animal issue. And we were there to get married on a weekend. Wow. So that news- went viral. People are hitting me up. Like, how do we help? How do we donate to you guys? Do we donate to help Paul's? We said, no, you donate to them, but you need to donate. We need to find a way to take these, right. this money. And so we can actually make real change with yeah. it. I don't want to sure. give it to someone else. And I don't know what they're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I called my attorney and we make the Ryan animal rescue foundation the day after I come home from my wedding. Oh, wow. That Monday. That's a lot of work. And, as I said, putting that together is a lot of work. I think yeah. that's one of the things that people love about the Van Pump Dog Foundation is it's something tangible that you can see. People come in, they see the dogs, they see the rescues, even if they can't, even if they donate a dollar, every dollar really helps. Sometimes we actually do dollar donations when we, we really need funding. But we've done so much there that has just been extraordinary. Some of the stories that we've seen, the stories of abuse, the stories of dogs being hit, you know, on the road and just left by the curb. I mean, the hoarders, the, it's just been right. unbelievable stories. I mean, heartbreaking. So much of it is heartbreaking. Yeah. So our foundation got funded, got started the day after our wedding based on a picture we didn't even post that went viral and a story that leaked that we didn't even tell anybody about. And that's how I got thrown into the animal world. And I was in and there already because I was taking pictures and, and years donating years my own money. Now, then? That was, uh, we got married three years ago. So we started our foundation three years ago, right after our wedding. Congratulations. And that's how it was. And the thing about our foundation, it's me and my wife that run it. Any other employee is part-time. They do it volunteer. Yeah. We have a guy that helps with our website. We have a guy that added some photos. So and that's it. So this is it. your and wife's kind of passion now. This is her full-time job running the foundation. This is both our passions and it's her full-time job. And this is what we talk about after I come home from work. We put our two kids down, this, our wow. five-year-old daughter and our two-year-old son. We put them to bed. And then we talk about our animal foundation right. at 9 p.m. It's so I'm in good for your children as well to have, oh. you know, pets and to be tactile and learn right. to be responsible. So, yeah, that's fantastic. I would love actually you to come to our Vanderpump Dog Foundation Garden. This year we can't have it because of COVID. But... Um, when we have it, I'd love you to come because yeah, I would love so to. Much, yeah. And we talk a lot about dogs and I myself am a dog guy, but during COVID, our foundation and what we do is it's me and my wife. It's whatever the needs are. So, you know, what we became foster kitten parents. We have oh. fostered over 12 have you kittens really? over this COVID break. And my daughter, she's in charge of it. My five-year-old daughter is the oh, best I kitten mom that. you'll Does ever she see. Them and everything. She feeds them. She so changes good. litter. It teaches her responsibility. Yes. It teaches her what fostering is about, which is she she gets upset every time one has to go, but she gets yeah. to know that she's helping finding a home. And How that's what this is all about. Now? We we had four we had four black cats about a month ago. Lucky Charm, Applejack, Cocoa Puff. And fruity pebble. I think I after love cereal. You, actually. I I think so. We you and I wasn't a black such cat a guy. Good example. Uh, I wasn't a black cat guy. You. So I I had to dive in. So you're and, more of a dog guy. Yeah, but now I love the kittens too. I love oh the cats. My God, you're a big softy. You are such a big softy. How are you tough enough to play on the football field? You I'm a different like person a teddy on the field. Bear. Huh? <laughs> I'm a, you can try it. I'm a different person on Sundays. No, I'll pass. But yeah, you. so the so the our, our four little cereal 
black cats kind of softened me up to it a little bit. Yeah. And then, um, we just had, we just had two cats that, um, we fostered that are getting adopted this week. So well, listen, I I have got so many fan questions of people because I put it out there that you were coming on that people want to ask you. Yeah, let's get it. Um, if you had to choose between football and dogs, hopefully you'll never have to, could he choose? And if so, what would it be? That's from Dev M. O'Connor. Well, I think for now you want to do both, right? <laughs> one. Yeah, for now other, I want to yeah. do both. But I understand that. I can't do football forever and I can do, I can help make a difference with the animal world forever as long as I'm here. So honestly, the long term is going to be animals and I'm doing both now and I'm showing people you can do both. I'm showing people you can be a 29 year old African American and hop in this field. It doesn't all have to be older white women that are that do this that is me right what, what, oh, that is white you women that do this i, I tell you <laughs> what if you no, no don't you even go there let me tell you my at my rescue at the Van i didn't Pop say Pop english rescue, women though no exactly thank you at my at the Van so Pop, we both can do it though yeah, right it doesn't both, matter well, who can we, everybody right. do it it's no it doesn't exactly. discriminate Re, uh, rescue doesn't discriminate but if you looked and you came into the vanderpump dog foundation there are people from all walks of life all colors exactly. all ethnicities all religions and you know we base a lot of our, our success on volunteers so i thank god for that really volunteers run animal rescue yeah. i've done stuff where i've gave 200 tickets to all volunteer workers i i support the volunteers 100 because my wife was a worker yeah. this started because yeah. my wife worked in the shelter for minimum wage my wife volunteered i volunteered and walked those dogs with her on tuesdays so it's run by volunteers. It's run by see your wife. great is people. Is she there now? Is she with you no, now? No, she's not there. No, my, my family's in Tampa. I'm in New Jersey right now. And they're moving up here at the start of the month to get the family back together. Right. So um, uh, Ree Rivers is asking, uh, what was your, to both of us, what was your most rewarding dog that you rescued? My most, my most rewarding dog that I rescued is my personal dog, Leo. We rescued him in Boston when I was playing up there. Um, big blue pity. Um, we wanted a dog that was grown up because we did the puppy before and we we're like, we don't got time for the puppy. Yeah. So we, we rescued him and he had some bad hips and we right. knew he probably needed a hip surgery. And uh, we, we rescued him. They say he's three or four years old, good with kids, good with other dogs, super chill. Uh, Name him Leonardo after the blue ninja turtle. And we take him to the vet. And they said, yeah, he's got some bad hips. Oh, and by the way, he's still a puppy. He's like 10 months. We're like, how is he so big? So he's going to be huge. We're like, how is he so big? And they're like, he's just big. So his front is so huge and his back legs are so small. And we believe that he was chained chained to a tree for a majority of his young life. And he was underdeveloped in the back. So my beautiful dog, Leo, that we'll probably show pictures of or you'll see online. See that. Um has had six leg surgeries in the first five years I had them. Oh, wow. And a lot of and physiotherapy, a, a, I would imagine. Both ACLs, hips, re-ACL, rehab. He's got free. We spent so much money in dog rehab. He started giving us for free. He was on a commercial because <laughs> he was on that dog treadmill so much. So my man, he's endured a lot. Yeah. And he's just, he's the, be- he's the absolute thing, the loyalty and so the inspiring. beautiful thing about a pet I is that no matter what he's going through, yeah. He comes home. I come yeah. home. He's happy. He's wagging his tail. His tongue's out. I and know. he's been through surgery after surgery. And now he's been pretty good. Knock on wood. No surgery in the last year or two. I but he's know. been the biggest Pets inspiration. So just, much better than husband. Just a dog's you can't his just ability come to home and find your husband wagging his tail and not complaining. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's the same for me too. Um, it, what was it? it was Reevy? Yeah, that's the same for me too. I think the dogs that have really been abused, or as I say, some of the dogs that have been hit by cars and just left for dead. When you see them come back and they're repaired and they're vital and they're wagging their tails, it is just so so rewarding so absolutely they just need a second chance that's what it's all about right rescue and yeah and everything is just giving these these animals a second chance on life yeah and they honestly they'll pay you back tenfold you're gonna get any so dog- many women just writing to you just like falling in love with you over this i'm telling you okay ladies calm down okay this is more difficult question uh logan um but i'm interested too and it's pretty contentious but do you think michael vick 
This is from Kimmy the Mid. Do you think Michael Vick should have been able to come back to the NFL? No. Personally, I don't. And honestly, the truth is, Michael Vick was one of my favorite players growing up as a, as a young player. And then when he did what he did, I, I didn't understand it. And then my wife read the book and we explained the details of what you did. And it's not really humane um, or right to do. That is, there's no good tendency in there. So to answer that question, surely one of my favorite players became one of my most hated players. And um, I play in the NFL. I don't stand for that at all. And personally, no excuse. I don't think he should have been. Um, have you seen? And that's my personal of opinion. Some of the dogs that were tortured, and and just absolutely, completely devastated. I think he had fifty something dogs when they found him, and so many of the dogs that they killed prior to the fire. I've, I've met I've met the dogs. Have you? Handsome Dan, Handsome Dan's rescue up in New England Has when you? I was there was named after Handsome Dan, the dog, a Michael Vick dog. Really? So a lot of the Michael Vick dogs, they got rehabilit rehabilitated elsewhere right. um, to have a second chance on life. Have you ever met and New England has a great area. Um, I played against them. Oh, what you so played yeah, I've met him. Since you, since you knew that, of what he was guilty of. Have you played against yeah. him since then? Yeah, yeah, I played against them and it's business on the field. I'm trying to beat him, of course, but I just don't respect it. And to answer the question, I just don't, believe so because if people knew the details and what was actually going into it like we talked about oh, it's bad it's gruesome, gruesome. it's it's gruesome. inhumane and and uh, it's just too far it's too much and it's not acceptable yeah he so i can't like accept that, it in in what i what i do for a living well, thank so thank you for being outspoken and and telling me about that i really appreciate that because it was truly devastating to us at, at the time but um you know, know what? I it gives me it gives me reason and light to do what I do on a positive side of things. Well, also, I think you've got to have a responsibility when you're a hero worship. Basically, you're on the platform and people are looking up to you. Examples have to be set, and this was not okay. I remember seeing right. an interview with him, and he was talking about when he went to jail. He was upset about eating a plate of spaghetti three days after. I was like, fuck off, you know. When you see all these pictures of these poor dogs, literally. Ugh, I, 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 it brings tears to my eyes. And we've seen the worst. We've been to hell and back because obviously we've been so involved with China and the dog meat trade. And not only just the abuse of dogs or like him with the dog fighting, but actually the torture of dogs. So anything that kind of comes to my mind like that Michael Vick case is is just truly devastating. Anyway, happier. Right. Let's go on to things happier. Well, JC Solheim says, how are you addressing and correcting behavioral issues before rehoming? Uh, that's to both of us. I mean, we spend a lot of time in the center, you know, working with. One of the very interesting things, actually changed the subject, is that we've been involved with lately, is working with veteran program. And so we're taking yeah. dogs and, you know, we're having to kind of really put in probably three to six months work, working with the training of, of veteran dogs. And that's been a very successful thing that we've just started. So Yeah, um, it's, a great, it's a great question. It's honestly a big thing that our, my foundation um, focuses on. My wife, after she worked in that shelter, she went and became a licensed dog trainer and studied under one of the top animal behaviorists, Katina Jones, um, in the New England area. So my wife actually um, understands and studies this and uh, has a degree in it. But what, what I would say that we do and how we just try to do things differently, not trying to just go the standard dog rescue route, is we look a lot about the people in rescue. And we have grants and programs that you can look at on our website and you can check out where we actually have paid for Katina Jones to go to certain shelters and rehabilitate their whole staff. We believe we could teach their staff yeah. what to look for, dog play groups. For if sure. we get the dog play groups better, then we can understand how to see the dog personalities better. So yes. then we can there make better fits because yes, we can get dogs adopted, but we worry about the return rate. Yeah, for sure. I get a dog adopted off a picture in a week, but that dog might be back in the shelter in a week. I'm trying to keep that dog out of the shelter for good. Yeah. So we got to work on the staffs. We got to right. give them... Um, better training, better, uh, more money, more knowledge, more power, bring in the top trainer that I've ever seen. I've seen her work. I've been to her courses. I've sat in her clinics and we've flown her in, paid for her stay. And we paid for her weekend to, to spend times in Nashville with, when I played for the Titans to work with NHA staff, to rehabilitate the staff who therefore can give more to yeah, the dogs. Exactly. If we could teach someone on that staff, that staff member can touch a hundred dogs a day. For sure. I can't touch a hundred dogs a day. For sure. We can train one dog. So we've had programs and grants. We 
work with individual dog cases where we, we pay for a trainer, rehabilitate one dog. We also work with entire staffs. So they then for can match and work with their dogs better. They can match the dogs better with homes. And therefore we're trying to look at that return rate, return rate yeah, and we're trying sure. to eliminate that return rate the best sure. we can. Right. So that's something that we do do with our foundation. That's a little different than I think some other foundations. And it's something my wife thought of with her background of working in the field. I would love to meet your wife as well. So if ever you're in Los Angeles, please come, you know, yeah. guest at our restaurants and uh, when we get them open. And um, yeah, I'll take you around the Vanderpump Dog Foundation. I'd love you. No to doubt. Um, yeah. So so now you're in New York. No, you're you're playing for the Giants, right? Uh, New York is, Giants, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is me who knows nothing about anything. You're, you're pretty good. You got, you know. I did a little bit of reading. But okay, so you're the New York Giant, but you were in Tennessee, I believe, weren't you? Yeah. And what was yep, that like? How, how do you do that suddenly? Do you get, now again, I don't know, do you get sold without your kind of consent? Does, some, does somebody just say, oh, you're being transferred to this team and you don't have any input on it? Or can you say, I don't want to go there? Or you kind of get bored? I mean, I know it's all always a yeah. whacking amount of money, so probably no. Yeah, it's playing. different. It's a little different than soccer. Do you have input soccer. or do you just go? Do you just say, okay, I'm off to Tennessee and you pick up your yeah. children and, and your wife and right. off you go? How does that work? It's a little different than, than your football or, or, or soccer. Um, it depends how good you are. And I'm a good player. So honestly, my, my contract was a certain amount of years. So my contract with tennis with uh, new England was four years. I was there from 21 years old. I left as a college junior to, to 25. And after I played in the last Super Bowl, I played with them. Um, I was a free agent. So I have no contract. I can go to the, any, any suitor. Tennessee was one of the highest paying offers I had. I had other offers, but it was a good fit for me and my family. It's a family city. Right. Um, it's not too busy. And it was a really good fit. And I, I, I could I met, picture my kids growing up there. So we went to Tennessee on a three-year deal. I played all three years out. I was a free bidder again. Did you love it Ten- there or not? Did you? We did. We, we, we did love it there. And the, the, the difference in the animal world was night and day from New England. New England had great uh, rehabs, um, like the way they were uh, you know, fix dogs and, and very yeah, educated up there. Yeah. yeah. And the South, they had better facilities because it was cheaper. So their facilities were beautiful. New England had very small facilities. Dogs kind of crammed in here. A lot of space, right? Tons of, tons of grants and tons of money for it, but they were dealing with a lot more, um, hoarding and dog fighting and things that you see in did the you South. you see a lot of dog fighting there then? Did you see kind of victims of dog fighting some of the... Yeah, we would see the remnants of it. We would we, we would work with some organizations that would go and kind of bust up the dog fighting rings and bring the dogs back in. Did you and ever the dogs go? Or did you ever kind of get involved in that? I didn't I'd get like a chance to, to personally go. Play a show up. Yeah, that's in our, that's in our future. Just didn't work on my schedule for boots on the ground and cut the chains. Yeah. And get, free the dogs. Yeah. Of course, I wanted to do I want to do that, no doubt. Um, and it just didn't time up. Oh, but you would just I did, be their worst nightmare. You showing up there? God, I would love And that. I But I did see when the dogs got back in that facility. And because of court cases, dogs are deemed property. So it takes 60 days throughout this court case for this dog to be able to get some help. Right. So they have to stay in this facility for 60 days, kind of pending right. because they're property. Um, so I do see the remnants of these dogs sitting there for 60 days right. yeah. and helping, helping with that aspect behind the scenes as well. So I've definitely helped. And, and that's where our foundation shifted and helped it with stuff, helped with stuff like that in that area. So being in Nashville, it went from being in the North to the South. It was just different, different causes, different issues, but a lot of great people, um, supported me 100%, took my foundation in, uh, partnered with Pedigree on a lot of different things because um, they're based out of there and Mars Pet Care. And we just did a lot of good work there. And what I became was someone who can tr- transcends jerseys. So jersey color. In NFL, you're this fan or you're that fan. Well, I want you to be this fan or that fan. You're the New York Giants fan. You're a Tennessee Titans fan. You're a New England Patriots fan. You're a New York Jets fan. Whatever. I want you to be well, I want to be a fan of his team, but I'm a fan of Logan Ryan as well because I like animals. Right, right. And I get, I get my animal fan base. For sure. Who's able to respect me as a human being and what I'm doing off the field. So it's transcending 
the jersey exactly colors. Where. So, so if you isn't there some kind of contention between New England players and New York players? I mean, so or not? So you can kind of be born New Jersey and then play for the New York Giants, and that's this. Yeah, because you don't you're, you're chosen in a draft. You don't know where you're going to go, and then so you go you to that team. A, that was my question. So you literally, they say, okay, Tennessee wants you, or the New York Giants want you, and then you just kind of like you mull it around, or, or you just kind of. Well, yeah. When you come out of college, there's an NFL draft, and you're drafted. You're chosen. You're drafted to a team. They drafted me 83rd overall. I was the 83rd player in the draft, and less than. 1% of college football players get drafted. So I was one of the select few to get drafted. Oh, so I got drafted and I had no choice where I went. That's where the team chose me. After I played that contract out and then I'm a free agent, now I can choose. Right. So I chose to go to Tennessee right. for money purposes and for were team purposes. then? Yeah, she was with me from the beginning. She's my rider. We've been riding together since college. Oh, so you met in college? Yeah, she was at, she was the same college. I was on the bench. I was a backup, 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 holding the water bottles. And she was a star softball player. And she took a flyer on me and well, it worked she took out. A flyer on you. She like, she gave me a shot, you know. She was the prettiest girl in class. Oh, and I, 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 I can okay. speak a little bit. So I, I ended up <laughs> convincing her to give me a date. Um, and she, she gave me a date. Regress a moment. And we just how started hanging you, out ever since. How did you persuade her then, right at the beginning? You want to know what I did for yeah, real? Yeah, I think I do. So I, I'm a broke college kid. <laughs> right. And kids don't try this at home. Are you guys and the same, same age then? Yeah, well, she's a month older than me. Right. So we're college sophomores. We'll just say 21 years old for the story. Um, and we're at a, my friends. I'm from New Jersey. I went to college in New Jersey. So I had some friends there. My friend's having a house party. Right. I heard that she broke up with her her high school boyfriend, I heard she broke up. I heard oh, she was so coming to the party. you had eye on her anyway. Well, we were, so we were in a class yeah. in the summer. Oh, in a minute. You like All right, so we were, I'll tell you the whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were in a class in the summer and um, she's a pretty girl in class. I'm on my phone. We had Blackberries at the time. So this is BBM. I used to so love on, the Blackberry. Right, so I'm on the Blackberry and I look up and where's a public speaking type class. You had to go give a speech about yourself. So I heard her say, blah, blah, my name's Ashley and I have this boyfriend. I'm like, up, oh, tuned out. <laughs> So I go get you my gave speech. gave up that easily? Yeah, I gave up. So I get my speech. She brought her sister to class. Her younger sister was in, was in class. So she brought her to the class to kind of sit on a lecture. I gave in my speech. What was and your speech? So we had a topic. I don't remember what my topic was about, but I, I wasn't comfortable with public speaking at this point yet because I'm 20 years old or whatever. And it's, you know, it's kind of get up in front of everybody yeah, and talk well, for 10 minutes. You do it. Yep. Right. So I'm going to talk about myself for eight minutes. That's easy to do um, when you don't have, when you don't really know a lot about your topic. So I talk about myself for eight minutes, talk about where my parents are from, how I was growing up, how I got into football, why I like football. And were you like this, the star this, football player at the school though? You said you were on the bench, but then were you like... Yeah, you know, I got, I got good. Yeah, I got good pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, it took it was a slow start and then, I, and then I got serious and got good. Especially so, when she was watching you. Right. So then I gave that speech. I guess I caught her eye a little bit. Yeah. So fast forward a couple months um, and I heard she's single. So she's coming to my friend's party and all us cool kids, we were upstairs in the party. So the party was downstairs, but upstairs was the VIP. So I said, make sure she comes upstairs and I'm chilling. So I take a bottle of cheap vodka, papav, whatever we could afford, probably $5 vodka you never drank. Right. And I poured it in the gray goose I bottle. Know what I've drunk. Well, I don't know back, you know, you're, you're in LA. I you guys didn't have a pot. silver spoon in my mouth when I grew up. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. I fought my way to So the it was something that I don't even want to endorse on here. Yeah. And uh, it, I took a Grey Goose bottle because, you know, Grey Goose has the oh, cloudy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I poured the cheap vodka and the expensive nice. vodka, the yeah. old trick. <laughs> and I said, hey, I saved this, you know, shot of Grey Goose for you, you know, this, this, and that. So we take a shot. We cheers to having a good time. We exchange numbers. And then the rest is, then so we ended up going on it. A... By default, really, you know. You yeah, I tricked her. To, yeah, by trick. Yeah. With, okay. Thinking I had more money than yeah. I had <laughs> to get the date, got the date. Yeah. And then I, and then I reeled her in. So did you, did you actually start talking about kind of your passion for animals or that wasn't then that hadn't been kind of born? No, no. We were both, um, we we're both sports fans. We we're talking about baseball. We we're talking about baseball. 
And then I told her to come over and uh, we watched the movie Hitch, of course, because Hitch is a classic first date movie. And I made fun of her. And that's what you got to do. I, I just kind of like just was taking little jokes and just use my sense of humor and kind of just made fun of her a little bit. And me and my friends, if you ever have close friends with guys, they make fun of each other all the time. Well, Ruthless. in England, yeah, we're pretty aggressive, as you know. Yeah, so I just, I just said, hey, like, you're cute, but I'm going to make fun of you. So I made fun of this or that or why do you eat that or why do you do this? And we just laughed and watched the movie and, and how, laughed and how laughed. How long was it before you thought, I love this woman, I want to marry her? So we're in college. So we're like, no title. Let's just not, let's just keep hanging out. I don't want to, you just got out of a relationship. You know, you just got out of a long relationship. I know you don't want to just go into another one. So let's just chill and hang out. So we would just hang out. And then we kept hanging out, kept hanging out. And after like six months, we're like, I kind of don't want you talking to anybody else. She's like, I kind of don't want you talking to anybody else. I was like, I guess you're my girlfriend. Okay, you're my girlfriend. And then she was my girlfriend. And then I, um, my parents were supposed to be out of town. So I'm going to take you to my, my parents' house. They're out of town. We'll be good. So my parents decided not to go out of town. I almost had like a, hey. a family cookout. Oh. So I brought her to the family cookout and it was supposed to be an empty house. Right. We were supposed to go party at the parents' house. Right. Nobody's there. And I'm like, there's like seven cars in, out front. I'm like, oh, I no. call my dad. I'm like, you're not down, down the shore. You're not by the beach. He's like, no, we decided to cancel that. We're having everyone that was supposed to go to the beach come to our house. <laughs> No, you took. So I said, I said, okay, Ash, um, you're going to meet my whole family. Grandma, mom, dad, brother. Right. So just threw her in the, threw her in the mix. what background was she from? I mean, like, were you from very different backgrounds or was it kind of like just a, a great kind of, you know, entwining of the families? Because, you know, certainly. Very different. Family. Really? Yeah. Very different. Yeah. She's, yeah, I got, you know. I'm black. I got black family. She's white. She's got white family. So you talk about diversity and how you're up, you're raised. And, but you know what, me and her, were both athletes. So we grew up in locker rooms right. of diverse people from different right. lives and walks of life. So she came in and I was worried. I got this, this, some cousins that don't come off as don't talk as, as clean as I do and have a rough background and, you know, kind of rough upbringing. Yeah. Uh, some of my family is, and she's got family that she's from Delaware. I'm from New Jersey, but she's got family from the South, from Virginia with right. an accent. And I got family from the city. So it was like, what is this wedding going to look like? Like what music yeah. are we playing? So that's right. when we kind of went destination too. <laughs> yeah. But it was like a meeting of the worlds. Yeah. And we kind of brought our families together. Yeah, you know, we, we kind of brought our family as well. Like uh, Ken's brother is married an Indian, a uh, lovely lady. I mean, they've been married for ages yeah. now. And then my cousin has married a beautiful black woman. So we've got kind of our families. Yeah. Kind of but you know what? Like you. the love, like it just intertwined everybody. Yeah. No, it exactly truly did. It it, be, it, right? it went that's exactly what we want. That's exactly it went way we easier. Want. It went way easier than I kind of thought it would be. Like we were kind of more nervous about it, about right. like me meeting her family. And was, what her did family. your mother think of, of Ashley then? Was she good enough for you? Because I don't know that I was ever good enough for Ken's mother, really. You know, I think I had to jump through hoops for years and years and years, you know, marrying her golden boy, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she was, uh, yeah, she was good enough. My mom knows that. I wasn't one to settle a lot. I was, I'm confident on my own. I didn't need uh, a spouse to be happy or yeah. someone else. You know, I had a lot of self-confidence. I was an athlete. I was normally good at, at it. Um, I was always buzzing around with energy. So I had a reputation of being a single athlete, you know, and Ashley was the one to settle me down and focus me up and kind of like really, right. uh, I didn't grow up. I told her all this time. I didn't grow up with images of um, two dogs and two beautiful kids and an animal foundation and a white picket fence. And, yeah, you know, I, I didn't grow up thinking like that. I thought I just think was that being in such a stable, loving relationship and having so much kind of in common has really kind of propelled you to the top of your game as well. And she's basically, you know, your support and, and she's responsible for a lot of your success, because I do think, you know, when you're in a happy relationship, it gives you so much more strength to deal with what, you know, what else is going on. Yeah, 100 percent. When I met Ashley, I told you I wasn't playing in college. I was on the bench. And I was close to like not quitting, but I was so down on myself. I didn't think I was that good. I didn't really have direction. And she kind of was in my corner. And I was like, you know what? I was going to transfer schools. I was going to go to a different school. But I said, I'm going to stick it out a semester because I met this girl and I want to hang out with her. Right. So I was like, I'm a, uh, she's like, you should just keep trying it. And I kept trying it. And you and said I got she better. was a star. She was a star at softball. Yeah, she was a star at her sport. 
Really? Yeah. And, and a sick thing about it is she had dreams to play for an Olympic team, the, the United States Olympic softball team. And they took the sport away. They just, one day they said, all right, dude, they cut the sport. Right. I'm like, well, this girl's been training her whole life for it. Wow. Wow. And they cut the sport. And she was raised as a tomboy, baseball player, softball player. Like she just wanted to play ball, loved it, did everything she could. Her and her dad grew up having catches and that's how she grew up doing it. And they just took her sport away from her. Right. right you know, right. cause she's a woman, right. you know? Yeah. And that's not cool at all. And I want to quit my sport that I have all this future. It wasn't going right for me. So I kept, I kept at it and it turned for me and I got more confident in myself. And, and I always had the work ethic, but I just started believing in myself because she believed in me. And uh, we went from not playing a lot early in my college career to leaving college early and going professional as a junior. Wow. And How playing much? with Tom Brady at 21 years old, you know, it's crazy. What was he like? Honestly, one of the best human beings you ever meet. Really? So good. I walk into that building and I'm like, oh, shoot, that's Tom Brady. He's way taller than you think. He's way bigger. I'm like, what am I going to say to him? You know, Tom Brady started playing. Tom Brady was the New England Patriots quarterback in 1999 when he got drafted. I started playing football in 1999. I was an eight-year-old in 1999. And Tom Brady was in the NFL already. And we're teammates. So you got My really entire well with life were, of watching did, football. Were you always intimidated by him or not? Oh, yeah. So I'm in there and I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to say? And he comes up to me and he goes, hey, you're Logan Ryan, right? I oh, go, yeah. Nice. He goes, how you doing? I'm Tom Brady, quarterback of the New England Patriots. I heard we drafted you in third round. We're really going to need you. I appreciate you for being here. If you need anything, just come to my locker. I'm always here. Oh, I need He introduced himself. Man. Can I go into his I said, locker? <laughs> oh, right. right. And I was like, wow, cute. man. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Well, you got... Yeah, yeah, I got you got Giselle. Yeah. Giselle's fiery. Yes. You don't want to yeah. mess with that no, one. No, no, no. I don't think you'd be looking in my direction anyway. But anyway, a woman can dream. Um, well, that's great to hear. So, you know, when you're kind of traveling and you're, how much time do you guys spend apart? You say the family are now in Florida. And so you're in New York. When are they, how much time and how do you juggle that? Is that really difficult? You know, when you kind of. Yeah. yeah. So this is the first time we've really been apart. My family's always been with me. But with COVID, there was so much unknown. I didn't want to move the family to the city so soon with New York, where I'm at. Right, my right. family's, they're settled. We recently moved to Florida, so we're getting settled there. My kids are getting older. I don't want to just keep moving them all over the place. Yeah. So it kind of just was a decision where let's get up here, get settled, and let's come up here short term for a couple months, and then we're going to go back to our house in Florida as soon as the season's over. Where but normally, in are you? We just bought in Tampa. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's beautiful five acres, equestrian neighborhood, horses around. So I think we're going to rescue a horse. I think horses is our next next step. Oh, and I I'm think we're going to rescue a... Actually, oh. normally I have my two little horses behind me, but they're out playing. Oh, wow. I've got two yeah. major horses. But they kind of go out to play in the middle of the day, and then they come back. And I've got a, a Cavalier horse. Have you ever seen Cavalier, the show? You know, I did the, see Cavalier. The, yeah, yeah, I've got one of those horses. When he was retiring, I, wow. I have one of those horses who's an absolute gem, this horse. I mean, That's awesome. Yeah, he's brilliant, smartest. I yeah. mean, he's smarter than most people. Yeah, we got a barn, a nice barn, beautiful barn. Oh, so yeah, really? I think we're gonna, when I'm done playing and we got more time, we're all together. When you say when I you're think, done playing, how can you be done playing? What, what? I mean, you're 29. Yeah, you've got years left, haven't you? I'm done when I want to be done. You know, I have other stuff in life, you know, going on for me. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be their coach. Um, I love my kids so much. I, honestly, being a father and being a husband is more important to me than football. And I'm really good at football and I go really hard at it. It's not, I don't want to discredit that. But when I'm done playing is when I decide I'm done playing. And I love it. And when that I would be that was gonna be a few years though, surely. Yeah, it could be a few years, but this is a this is a business. You know, this this is a game that you play um because you love it. And then when you get to this level of it, you know, it's work. You come every day, your friends get traded to different teams, your friends get released, you can get fired in the middle, you can get fired on Wednesday, you know, yeah. they could fire you at any time. And you see families move, kids have to move. And it's so much moving and it's tough on your family. Right. That's um, my question. Where you can say, you know what? I'm done with it. I made enough money. Right. Um, I'm what, comfortable. What do you think's next for you? What do you think ultimately you think you'd like to go into the animal welfare business maybe? Um, yeah, I'm definitely an animal welfare business. Definitely to make an impact there and, and 
And the beautiful thing about football is it allows me to build my platform for this as well and talk to you. I'm sure if I didn't play, we wouldn't be talking right now, no, right? I so I thought it was talk to you. Yeah. Right. So it just no, it gives me the opportunity right. you to shine a light on it. You have that platform. Yeah, I'm able to have a great platform right now. Yeah, but you're able to have you, a great you've platform. Got such a big heart, and you're so articulate, and you care so much. And I just think that will see you through whatever you want to do. I see you're a truly passionate person, and I'm not kissing your ass. I'm just really saying what that really comes through. So you know, for me, obviously as a dog lover, rescuer, but just as speaking to another human being, your passion is really, really it's uh, palpable. So thank. Thank you. Yeah. The beauty of this is I just want to, you know, show people that we like we talked about the diversity of this, that we can diversify this, this cause and that anybody can help. You could be eight years old and, and foster. You could be my daughter's five and she's helping by fostering a kid. Right. Right. I'm talking to you. You're helping giving back all your everything, uh, everything that you do with the brick and mortar and how you're doing in the Vanderpump. Uh, rescue. What I'm doing, the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation, and getting the football fans to see these kids. Like I'm a tough football player with tattoos, and I got abs, and I got arms, and all that stuff. And I'm holding kittens and holding puppies. Well, it's like I him. can beat. And yeah, you even said it. You even said Jiggy. it. Like he, he's not right. He doesn't feel it's emasculating. He walk around with his little tiny right. dog for ten years. So I can play a masculine sport like American yeah. football and be one of the toughest people in the world. But I can also care for kittens. I can also yeah. care for dogs. It's cool. It's hip. Right. And that's what the Ryan Animal Great Rescue Foundation is about. Great message. That you can be you can be masculine, but you but this can be cool too. You can be cool and have a kitten. You can be cool and foster. You can be cool and raise money. Um, so right. you did have the number twenty six for years, and you'd always post on twenty six. But now are you going to change it because your numbers changed twenty three? Is it going to be the twenty third, or it could be the twenty third and the twenty sixth? Right. So you know that that whole program is in a transition right now because that's what we did before we had a foundation. That was like. She's like, let's just go make a difference and take a picture. But we're doing so much more now that we're helping do dogs every day. I'm right. posting stuff on my Instagram story every day. Right. I'm like, I can do more than just a 23rd. Right. Now I have this following. It doesn't, people have to, it doesn't have to be one dog a month. Right. You know, I'm helping a dog a day. I'm helping 10 dogs a day. Anything that comes across, I tell people, hey, throw it up on my social media. Tweet can that, I, retweet you, that, in, post that, repost that. Are there any other football players that, you know, really kind of uh, kind of donated to the cause or supportive of the cause? Uh, yeah, I think there's I think there's some guys that um, help out with the cause. I think there's guys that do it when it's time to. And I think there's guys that, you know, some people you have a charity, you might donate once a year. There yeah. might be someone like me who does it every day. You know, there's no one that does it to my extent of uh, my wife works at it. My wife yeah. worked in the field. My wife's a dog trainer. Yeah. My wife worked in a shelter. My wife runs the foundation day to day. I run the foundation day to day. So just the extent of, I do it full time. And I think that's the only difference, but there's been some players that definitely, um, definitely support the cause more than ever. Um, we have a, something where we have my cause, my cleats, where uh, one week out of the year, the NFL lets us wear cleats for a cause. And I see a lot of guys do it for animal shelters oh, right. and local animal shelters yeah. and stuff where I'm donating cleats every week for animal shelters, you know? So I'm just, I'm just on the extreme end of it. And that's just how I am. I'm all in just like as I am as a father, as I am as a husband, as so, I am as a football player. Right. So you think that kind of follows through. That's what I said earlier. You seem to have this passion, this drive. You're so articulate. And, and that probably just follows through in every aspect of your life. Are you yeah, are I'm that high, high energy. intensive as a husband? Are you like really, you know, kind of... I try to be. I mean, you got to ask her that. I think I am. I'm very uh, positive. I believe in positivity. I'm Zen master. You know, I'm, I'm, she, she gets a little more worked up than me. I try to be real laid back and cool and positive about everything because I know the love's there. And I know just our intentions need to be matched. And sometimes, you know, we're who learning too. We're, who gives in normally? I mean, like, because in our, you give in. Yeah. I mean, we both give in. We both give in for sure. Um, she gives in more than she used to. For sure. So she's definitely giving in more, but I felt like I naturally give in, but I also stand for what I believe is right. But I mean, we go through our, like any married couple, you know, you have your times where bad communication, I'm a bad communicator at time. Well, I'm not a scheduler. No you are a bad communicator. Well, I'm not a scheduler. Like my wife, they got me on Google calendar. Da, 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 da. Right, yeah, I like, yeah. I don't met, you know, I have a routine. And right. So you've been married three years and has we've been together nine or 10. All right. And has it changed your relationship? Do you think actually getting married changed your relationship? No. So no. It's just the same. Just solidified. We're, we're best friends. Parenting. 
Yeah. Parenting has changed the relationship and do you kids. Agree on parenting, or do you kind of spoil them more because you're kind of gone and then you come back and then you kind of Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to figure it out. I'm the yeah. fun dad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm the fun dad. Well. Chocolate, yeah. dropping yeah, chocolate yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kids love our, me. That makes our job so much more difficult. The kids yeah, love yeah, me, yeah. man. The yeah, kids love me. For that. Yeah. But hey, yeah. all the housewives, COVID, <laughs> I was home. I didn't, I didn't. So I have to play this year right away. They, they canceled football for, for a little bit. Right. I was home every day. Hey, my power to you. Well, I don't did, know if I could do it. Did that change your perspective, though? Did it change your perspective of thinking, okay, there's got to be an element of discipline. I can't be just the good guy that kind of comes in and ruins it all. <laughs> uh, yeah, it yeah. definitely did. It's yeah. just the amount, of, the amount of tension, intentional yeah. attention. Like, you can be there with your kids and not be there. Yeah, But to sure. physically be there and your kids have no Connect school. Yeah. And your kids are there 10 hours a day, play, play, play. And I have a big imagination. So me and my daughter, she's like, I had a daughter first. She softened me up. So I was a lot tougher before now. My daughter softened me up, but we have the same imagination. We can go deep into imagination land and I'm- Really? Past, like telling stories I'm, and things like that and creating games? Oh, nails painted, tea parties. Well, you do that? Character. Hold on oh, a yeah. Look, do, look at my hair. What's wrong with your hair? What have you- no, I'm just saying, this thing go up right here. And I look like Mulan from Disney if I put it up like this. You know, I'm Mulan right now. I'm going to have you You know, it's kind of like minute. Michael B. Jordan or The Weeknd. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just throwing it up. So basically, but yeah. you kind of like get involved in all the kiddie games and you love all that. I, I just, oh, yeah. it was so devastating to me. Even today, I think they posted something about Kobe Bryant's daughter, young daughter looking at that picture. I think the nation's just heart broke, you know, for seeing him not just what a wonderful human being but just again so kind of articulate and such a great father what a tragedy that was yeah you know you um him? i did i got him i got his number i got the number eight infinity flipped on the side infinity tattooed on me um he's such an inspiration to me because oh, cool. he he inspired me to be that driven off the field he inspired me to be this driven as a father he inspired me to be this driven as a husband. He inspired me to give him my all in charity work, not just football. I could just do football and be one of the best players on the Giants and, and win. I've won two Super Bowls. I made millions of dollars. I've accomplished a lot of things people don't get accomplished of. Accomplished, and I came from a lot of hard work and dedication. But I also inspired to give that as the best husband and the best father. Well, the reason I and brought he, up Kobe was because there's so much of you talking to you and having seen him interviewed and what people say about him. It just seems so many similarities. So, yeah. Well, that's a that's a great that's honestly one of the greatest um, compliments I've received because he's a real real big role model of mine and not just his play but just his work ethic and especially his work ethic toward um, his family. You know, I think that I think it's great how he's able yeah. to transition. Yeah. Because before my identity used to be football. Yeah. When I was in college, my identity was I'm not playing well. I don't have a lot of self confidence. I need someone to believe in me. Now it's like I'm I'm not playing well, but great. Guess what? I'm a great husband. I'm a great father. I'm still making a difference. I can still do more, and I can walk away from the game. But you're saying you're 29. What else are you gonna do in your life? I'm like whatever else I want to do. Right. If yeah, I want to be on that on a true. podcast, but, but I have radio show interview. Well, that's great, but you're still such a baby. I think you've got to maximize because you've got the rest of your life to do. You know your dreams to follow your dreams. So right now, I just think um, a few more. Years yeah. No doubt, you have people come play eight years of this sport. See how their body feels. They say every game's like getting out of car, getting out of car crash, how the bumps and bruises. So hey, listen, I eight years put my socks on. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it takes a toll, but I'm feeling good. I'm eating, eating healthy and uh, so all when, fish when diet, no meat. To, no meat. Yeah. So when are you going back to um, to Florida then? Or they're coming to you? They're coming to me. My kids, family, come up. We're actually partnering with Mercedes, and Mercedes is giving us a Sprinter, and we're driving our dogs up. We're not PJing. We're driving her up because our dogs don't fly. We don't like flying them. So any team I go to, I drove there. I drove from Boston to Arizona where I train. Right. I drove from Arizona to Nashville where I moved to. And my wife is driving from Florida up with Mercedes, Florida up to New York in a Sprinter with two dogs and a kid. And, nice. uh, and that's how the family gets on. We, we, we don't fly our dogs. We drive them everywhere. So we're, we're looking into getting a Sprinter so we can get those. My dogs can ride in style. 
I love that. <laughs> Listen, it's yeah. been such a pleasure talking to you. Um, you know, it really has. It's uh, it's unusual to meet somebody that is just so focused and so philanthropic and just got such a, a good heart. So for me, it's really, it's been an honor to talk to you. Well, same, likewise. And like I said, I didn't know a lot about reality, like what you do. But then your following is tremendous and for you to give back the way you do. And when I really saw, looked into it and really like, let's see if she's really about it. You're really about it. Like we're really going to be good friends and, and get along and, and I hopefully hang out. I do not want to hear you are in Los Angeles with your wife and you do not call us. I'm going to hold you to that. There's going to be dinner and there's going to be the van pump. There we go. Red wine, red wine, hopefully. All of it. All of it. So Good, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to uh, go to your website? Yeah, throw all that stuff out. People can find us. We're going through a big rebrand right now. That's the that's the coolest thing uh, about it. Our website's going through a rebrand because we're talking about being young and hip and cool and anybody can get involved. Anybody can help from all walks of life. And um, so we're rebranding and we're coming out with merchandise where it's going to be select. I'll make sure you get sent the first drop. It's going to be Okay. Like Justin Bieber and Travis Scott meet Animal Rescue. Okay, okay. So it. if you think about what they're coming out with and what they're doing, I got Travis Scott stuff on right now. Nice. But I'm going to wear my own brand. I'm going to be in RARF stuff. I and everyone's going to be, it's going to be a young, cool hit thing to do is the Animal Rescue, like you talked, like we talked about. Yeah. Well, and that's what I want the whole foundation. Yeah, because like our story is I had to make my foundation, pick a logo, pick a website in one day. I got married, came back on Monday. People are calling me about how do we donate? I'm like, I got to make a nonprofit up. We made it. Boom. So now a couple of years running it, I'm like, no, we got to make this more like me, my personality, my lifestyle. Sure. Yeah. So we kind of made it. Authentically you. You're yeah. Right so we got to, we had to rebrand that thing. We had to rebrand. And so we're rebranding and it should be pretty much finished in October, I believe in the next couple of weeks or so. Okay. But people can be on a lookout for our merchandise. People can be a look on our website, our Instagram and how to help, how to get involved. And it could be donate a dollar. It could be foster a kitten. Exactly. It could be go to your animal shelter and volunteer for an hour. Yeah, I don't care. I just want people Every to get involved. A little bit helps, absolutely. Because it helps. And as like when we talked about, can you name a favorite rescue? It's so hard because everyone is such a great story. Like, like it's just like Mr. Bingley, who we talked about when it all started in the beginning, he was at that shelter because a drug dealer got arrested. They fired the police. Close to his ears, he was recently deaf. Oh, based on a gunshot. Right. So when he's in a shelter facing the wrong direction, he just lost his hearing like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So and he had to live with that, and he yeah. got adopted in one of my pictures. We just had a dog we put down a couple of weeks ago, Julius. Um, I had a blind pity, no eyes. He was he was uh, the the shelter that my wife worked at years ago, seven eight, seven eight years ago, where she first started working. They got a dog in there. He was surrendered. He was a pet for nine years. And someone surrendered him. A kid went to college. Dad didn't want him. I hate that. We put him to the shelter. The time. They can just, we, somebody walk and we had a 14-year-old dog just giving up, like, not. Giving up. Yeah, not even, right. even to their family. Not, but like, so you think you're, they're doing you a favor by bringing, I mean, we would rather that than a kill shelter. But still, come on. Right. Given to the shelter. So my man, uh, Julius, he uh, had no eyes, sewn shut. Uh, no story on why. Believe it's something medical, but glaucoma. They don't normally take both eyes. It was a very strange case. My uh, wife's friends at the shelter were saying this dog um, is recently blind in the shelter. He he relies on his smell and his and the and his sound and hearing. Um, it smells horrible in a shelter sometimes. Um, it's really loud with the dogs barking. So he's ramming his face into the cage. He's bloodied in the face. Oh, My wife yeah. finds it a foster house. She she rescues him. Yeah. She's seven months pregnant with our second child. We got two rescue dogs. We got a three year old daughter, and she's like, "I'm bringing this dog home." I'm like, "You're what?" And she's <laughs> like, "I got to rescue him. It's my calling. I have to rescue him." So we rescued Julius. He lived with us for three years, and I call him the Roomba. He's able to come in the room, bump into the corners. He maps it out, and he knows exactly where to go to the bathroom. Right. He knows where his food's at, yep. and he's completely blind. And he came in our house of two other dogs, Did you ever two find young out kids. Why he was blind though? You don't know. No, and it doesn't matter because yeah. he's his. Because when we got him, he was a happy dog, and we gave him a couple of years. He just recently passed a few weeks ago, and um, 
And that's the beauty of it. We gave him a second chance. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's, as I say, really been a pleasure. The world is a better place with you in it. That's for sure. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Your, your podcast is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm so excited much. to be a part of it. It was, it was definitely fun. Thanks, darling. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay, that was a little too much. He is just amazing. I think every woman, if you saw that interview, if you listened to that interview, must have fallen in love with Logan Ryan. I know I did. Anyway, uh, rate and subscribe wherever you watch, wherever you listen to. And thank you for listening and watching to All Things Vanderbilt.